the more time they may have to spend in the airport shops. Is this iPad or iPad 2? iPad. Oh, so last year. <laughs> The airport is attempting to modernise every part of its passenger services. We'll be doing three more at the three miles, yeah, that'll go up to four if, if you need to. Please. And Gatwick is trialling its new £20,000 buggies for passengers with restricted mobility. These ageing and tattered mobility vehicles are being replaced. As the man in charge of the passenger experience, John Briley is keen to take the new buggy for a spin. I think they're great. I... I'd love to have a go on one. You can have a trip round. Oh, look, GL 007. Has it got the spokes that come out the hubs? Listen, the time, this, this... Rotating number plates. You want to pimp it up a bit, you know? You want to get some wide wheels yeah. on, a few dice, Wayne, Gainer. We're, uh, we're excited about them, aren't we? we? Are very You've got to get out more, probably. Get yourself in, John. Go on. Could you please pass your seat? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, time for John to strap himself in. Crikey, what are you expecting here, Bessie Braddock? Comfort is... Our main priority. Oh, be still my beating heart. After a quick whirl around the terminal, John is sold on the new car. Careful how you get out there, sir. Oh, thank you very much. Well, that's about as much excitement as I've had with my clothes on, to be honest. It's 3.30 p.m. at Gatwick. It's a nice quiet area and it's peaceful and you can sit just for maybe just a couple of minutes and just think. After the lunchtime rush comes the afternoon lull. John Briley takes the opportunity to grab a few moments of reflection. But occasionally you just need to sit and think, actually, what am I doing today? What's my role? What am I intending to do? And it's that uh, old saying that when you're up to your neck in crocodiles, you have to remember that your original intention was to drain the lake. While John grapples with metaphors, a departing 777 has been held up. Engineers Stephen Graham rush to investigate. What have they spotted? Well, on the walk around, the co-pilot uh, thinks he's seen a crack on the above the window on the skin. I think it's grease or a dirt mark, but we, we're duty-bound to really go up there and have a look. Yes. See yes. exactly what it is. OK. A cracked fuselage on an airliner could be catastrophic. With the flight falling rapidly behind schedule, Graham commandeers the steps to check it out. Uh, Graham's gone up the steps now, and uh, he's approaching the mark. Um, he's got a cloth in his hand, and uh, is it dirt or is it a crack? Oh, no, look at that. It's just like magic. Uh, Graham's wiped the mark away, so it looks like it's going to be good to go. <laughs> Pure magic. Uh, we don't call Graham magic hands for nothing. All we need is Debbie McGee now. <laughs> uh, Graham's going to go up on the flight deck now and explain to the crew uh, what the problem was and tell them that the aircraft's perfectly safe to fly and that the captain can carry on filling out his expenses sheet. It's now quarter past four in the afternoon, and the 777 departs 15 minutes behind schedule. <laughs> there we go, a lot of fuss over nothing, but uh, we had to take it seriously. At Gatwick, like all airports, the safety of passengers and personnel is of paramount importance. The planes have to be safely maintained too. This Boeing 757 has been recently sold to a freight company but has yet to be delivered. Engineer Danny Reggiamo's task is to keep it in top condition until then. Don't panic. That's my job. The 757 hasn't been flown for a month, and to keep the engines in good condition, their oil supply needs to circulate around them. So it's time to give them a good revving. Where else would you have so much power at your fingertips? Danny and his colleague Peter take the 757 down to a spare holding point on the airfield, park up and apply the brakes. What we'll do now, we'll request permission to go to high power. 
with the throttle pushed forward, the engines are running at 80% capacity, pushing out over 64,000 pounds of thrust. Now we wait for five minutes. First time's a bit nerve-wracking. The whole thing just vibrates up and down, side to side. You can see the tailplane outside yeah. flexing along. As the plane strains against its brakes, a vortex of groundwater is sucked into its jet engines. Accidentally releasing the handbrake now would send the two engineers shooting off on a trip of a lifetime. No cargo, no passengers. Like a rocket. Yeah. Engine run complete. The 757 is primed and ready to fly. They're going to have to open some more desks. In the terminal, an unwelcome queue has built up. Central from PAX to... Yeah, good afternoon to you. Just to make you aware, Zone D, we're now looking at um, overspilling out. The reason being, it would appear that we are three desks short on the current plot. Yes, Cupid, uh, we'll record all that. Thanks very much for your help. Some people love to use the radio more than others, you've probably noticed. I like the radio. I like you. Yeah, central, radio. central. Yeah, I've uh, just moved the trolley and uh, I've Actually, now uh, just wiped my nose. headed to. I was going to do the wipe my nose thing. All right. Just going to say central. I've just wiped my nose. Come on, let's get out of here. I think our work here is done. Do you think so? For the time being, yes. Okay. <laughs> Is there anything you particularly want to look at? Civil wise, you've done some uh, repairs in the back of stands 9 and 10. It's 4.45 pm. Gatwick's airfield compliance manager, Jerry Barkley, is leading a senior management team to ensure that the airfield health and safety requirements are being met. High standards as always. Uh, Some expect everything to be as it should be, absolutely, all the time. Jerry's experienced eye soon spots some hazards that need sorting. OK. Have you seen this? That's uh, not good. The wheels come off for whatever reason. That's the sort of thing we don't want to be leaving on the apron. That strap could easily get ingested into an aircraft engine. You can't ever relax. You have to be on your guard all the time. Inspection complete. The airfield is given a clean bill of health. It's five o'clock in the afternoon, and inside, the terminals are filling up as the final wave of passengers travel through the airport. Now you can see us. Any difficult problems today or anything? Nothing, no. It's been now. To help them get to their flights on time, John Briley has introduced a new team of multilingual concierges who can assist bewildered passengers in their own language. My role, I see, is to ease that passage in whatever way we can, be it concierge services, be it self-service check-in, eliminating the queues through the border agency. Most people, when they're passing through an airport, the easiest passage that we can get them from the curbside to their bums on their seats flying out to what really is their holiday. That's the best thing we can possibly do, make it easy for them. Before coming to Gatwick, John worked in the music business, creating huge hits for John Jett and Haircut 100. I feel like everything I've done in a previous existence has geared me towards making this job as efficient as I possibly can. My people skills, my life skills, spotting these kind of these kind of traits in other people as well um, is is really a fulfillment for me as the evening rush continues it's heading towards clocking off time for John people are turning up bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and looking forward to a bit of Sun and I've been here about 12 hours now so I think uh, I think I've done my stint to be honest and I'm really a bit tired so I think uh, I suppose I better try and go back home I'll do it all over again tomorrow. While it's the end of the working day for some, for others, it's the start. Rookie air steward Steve Andrews is waiting for the delayed 737 Oscar Charlie November from Rome. It's all well and good me saying at five past eight, I've just turned up to work. Oh, my plane's delayed by an hour. 
that might just be where it's been to so many places. Five minutes here and there, by the end of the day, soon catches up. It's 8 p.m. The 737 arrives an hour late on its sixth flight of the day. It's been held up by security at Rome, so it's now running late for its final journey for Bologna. Now we're going to have to make up, try and make up a bit of time. Um, we've got to turn it around in 35 minutes. So we do our best. Smooth ride? Smooth ride, yeah, it's fine. It's a nice, nice day down in Europe, really. It's lovely. So it's going to have to find it. It'll be fine down in Bologna. Um, Aeroplane's good, no problems with that. Right. Have a good trip. The 737's departure marks the end of another busy day for turnaround manager Chris Walker. So we turn it around roughly in about 39, 40 minutes. It's not bad considering with considering of the load we had. It's 10 o'clock at night, and like a city at rest, the departure lounge that once thronged with life now lies deserted. Its passengers have flown. At 30,000 feet, on his way to Bologna, Steve is serving the evening meal on board Oscar Charlie November. Um, I went to pick up his bottle. I don't quite know what happened. It just kind of went... And it's rolling down the plane as we speak. So I'm going to go and find that in a minute. It's quite good not to throw wine at a customer. Generally, they prefer it when you place it on their tray. If I can't find Just it now, we're in trouble. Lots, then you're okay. <laughs> Ta da! Panic over. Found oh, it. You're I hadn't rolled that far. Well it's approaching midnight. At back of Gatwick, the empty buildings begin to fill up again. Not with passengers, but with night workers. Over 40 cleaners begin to clear up the mess left behind by the travellers that fill the terminals every day. Outside on the airfield, the world's busiest single runway sits idle, awaiting the first flights of the morning. He's set. Cut off. They're off. He's set. Off. It's past midnight in Bologna. The 737 Oscar Charlie November is finally given a well-earned rest. Well, thanks very much. Thanks, Kat, for a lovely day. Nice fly out. That's it. That's how we switch it all off. Take the keys out of the ignition. <laughs> On its return to Gatwick, this plane will have travelled 4,000 miles in 24 hours. The crew will return home in the morning when Oscar Charlie November and Gatwick will have to do it all over again. One year on under new management, one billion pounds spent, three major building projects undertaken and completed, new airlines flying in and out on a daily basis, and passenger numbers set to soar. Gatwick is an airport transformed.